Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back to the southern wing of the Stink Bug Works. As you know, Big B and I are collaborating on these. Now, we haven't sent too many emails back and forth talking of the collaboration, only that we're going to do it. And the manufacturer that goes by the Build RC, I think is what he goes by on eBay, sent me this. I'll get you uh, links to all this. I'll, I'll put a link to this in the description. But essentially, the manufacturer was kind enough to send it to, send the larger one to Big B so that he could do a build review. And Big B said, oh, send the smaller one to Dr. Jet and he'll do a build review too. So this is the same manufacturer, like I said, that did the donut. And I, I thought the donut really missed the mark. And I'm going to be totally honest and upfront with these guys because I'm sure that's that's what they really want to hear. This is a huge improvement over the donut, just a huge improvement. There are some things that I think they could clean up. One of them is fiberglass epoxy composite is, uh, 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 um, well, it doesn't need the epoxy for strength. It gets its strength from the fiberglass. The epoxy is merely there to hold the fiberglass in place. In a way, it's like a bridge where the steel acts in com or tension and the concrete acts in compression and never the twain will meet because concrete has terrible tensile strength and almost unbelievable, you know, uh, compressive strength. And so I'm looking on the inside of this, and I don't know if you can see it, if I can get the light, but there's a lot of areas that are shiny. When you're laying this thing up in the mold, you know, obviously this wasn't a bag mold. It was just a wet layup. When you're laying this thing up, take a paper towel and blot up all that excess weight. You know, the epoxy. And you really don't need that much epoxy in the beginning. Save money. Don't use quite as much epoxy. But as you're laying stuff up, this, this looks pretty good in here, but over here... I, it's kind of shiny again. So again, as you're laying this stuff up, and it'll help you, you know, because sometimes the, the cloth will move and you can kind of use it, you know. And in fact, I do it as I'm wetting out the cloth. You know, I'll go in with a brush and, you know, and, and kind of chase it. Because really, you only need to keep the fibers from moving. So that's the whole point of the epoxy is to keep the fibers from moving relative to one another. You know, you're, you're gluing the fibers together. And once they're glued together, they're not going anywhere. Now, when I build a model, I like to, you know, familiarize myself with it and develop a plan, a concept. What are, what are my goals for this? Do I want it to look good? Do I want it to be the fastest thing ever? Do I want it just to be reliable? Do I want something I can go out and run, run ducks over with? You, you know, so you got to have a, um, a plan. And I thought through several plans. I thought, you know, I'll, I'll use his gear and build it his way. And then I measured up this strut. Now, this strut, this is real interesting. The, the rudder appears to be uh, machined from a billet. 
and and the bracket looks like it was uh, extruded, but that's neither here nor there. It's an odd size. This cable is one point point one four four inches. It's inches. Point one four three five one four five here. Point one four six. That's an odd size. In millimeters, that would be 3.62 millimeters. I'm going to use good quality hardware. I'm going to make this a respectable goer. Um, I looked at the Sponsons. Now, the Sponsons, hello, are almost, if not entirely, dead flat across. Now, I like a little bit of dead rise. It kind of keeps the boat, you know, stabilized when they're flat. But many, many very, very, very fast riggers. Use flat sponsons. So I'm going to leave that. I did notice there's a bit of rocker in here at the, at the trailing edge. And so in order to make this a good goer, it's going to have to get some sponson work. Not a whole lot. And mainly to this trailing edge right here. Just clean that up. So I've ordered a 3660 motor, 3500 kV. I have 3.5 amp, amp hour 3S packs that also run the silver bullet. And I'll put two of those in here with a 36 millimeter motor. Uh, a decent healthy servo. I'll probably use the um, Sea King 120. I like those. I think I have a couple. So uh, I'll use one. And that should be the plan. Oh, I'll use a uh, Speedmaster strut and probably a Speedmaster mini rudder they're like four inches and change and this sucker's like four inches and change so <laughs> the speedmaster mini rudder <laughs> mini rudder is about that big so that's what i'll put on here i'll put on speedmaster hardware i'll uh i think this motor's got a five millimeter shaft so i may get creative on the the coupler i like those call it coupler big b was talking about you know octura couplers while they're bomb proof they will crush your cable because there's only three jaws squeezing down on it there is a series of couplers and i think steve over at offshore electrics has them but they're um they're collets. They're collets for uh, little mini mills and the like. And uh, they work with a five millimeter shaft, I believe. So you put this collet on and the collet will grab the cable and it, it grabs it real nice and evenly and pressure, you know, is applied equally throughout. So it's a much better way to go. If I were a king for a day, every coupler would be a collet. So, I think I pretty much covered everything. My basic plan for this. Um, it's just going to be a rugged, rough and tumble. Here it is, throw it out there kind of boat, you know. Until next time, jet out. 
Welcome back, boys and girls. I thought I'd give you a little insight here on how I go about blueprinting sponsons. What I did real quick is I took a block that had no sandpaper on this side and sandpaper on that side. And since these are level, I could go in and level these out. And I went down till I went through the gel coat and stopped there. So I had as best as I could do flat. Then I roughened up everything everywhere else and I put in this tape dam. And my plan, my plan is to take um, a thick paste of epoxy and shredded fiberglass, you know, the consistency of toothpaste, and go in here and just kind of build up all these edges. And I've sanded all this. So I'm going to go in there and build up all these edges and push this tape out of the way and sort of build this flare of, uh, of fiberglass and epoxy. And I'm going to build it up and build it up. And so it'll, it'll be wider and then I can sand it to a nice sharp cut your finger on big bees uh turn fin nice that sharp edge so in order to make this thing a goer that's all it really needs is just clean up these sponsons and and we'll talk about the air trapped under here we'll we'll see how much it, it really does okay until next time jet out